on today's show so you think you can draw <laughs> we'll be exploring all things animation with deborah anderson also known as the black woman animator she's a brilliant 3d modeler teacher speaker journalist youtuber and thought leader and beautiful human being here deborah has a vast experience as a 3d modeler in the animation industry she worked for digital animation this is one of the top animation studios in Seoul, South Korea. We're going to have to talk about that. I'm so curious. She modeled objects, vehicles, and scenery for television shows such as Family Guy, The Cleveland Show, Batman, The Brave, the Bold, the Brave and the Bold, Scooby-Doo, and The LeBrons while working at Digital Emation. She also teaches kids and adults animation and helps guide them down the path of creative expression. Deborah has a thriving YouTube channel and a podcast called Black Woman Animator, where she highlights animation professionals and she shares everything, all things animation. Please welcome Deborah Anderson. <laughs> what up, though? <laughs> what up, though? So tell us, when did you fall in love with tech? So I'll say um, tech, I don't know, tech animation, though. I always loved animation growing up. I was a Disney kid, um, watched all the VHS tapes and had my Disney books where I would draw. People used to think I would trace um, when I would draw, so I would draw from the, the VHS tapes from Disney books and that was where um, my love for animation came from, but also I never looked at, like, like my peers, I never looked at Little Mermaid and was like, I'm gonna do that. I was just right. like, I'm, math, I'm good at math, so I'm gonna be an architect. Okay. <laughs> or industrial engineer. Oh, uh, you weren't even thinking about being an animator. No, I don't know why. <laughs> I was surrounded. I was literally a Disney kid, but I don't know why. I was looking like, yeah, I'm going to do that too. Yeah. I didn't find animation as a career until my senior year of high school. Well, like, at what point did it get tech? Because you were just drawing at first. Yes. And then so, at some point, it went into the computer. <laughs> what's, what's hilarious is that I have a laminated newspaper article in my apartment right now where, <laughs> where I was like 12 and they came to to highlight tech kids or something like that and my dad was like don't tell them that I know more about technology than you do <laughs> <laughs> so like I was using the computer but my dad knew more than me uh -huh. um but yeah I would, I would you know because I'm a middle of the road millennial so I didn't get computers until middle school and stuff like that so mm -hmm. um I, I didn't have tech until it was available <laughs> in middle school yeah so uh because i used to i had the typewriter i i did micro fish in college so I, I didn't always have the the um advanced tech growing up but um when i took a 3d modeling class i, I did dual enrollment in high school so i took a 3d modeling class i took seven classes at a community college is this why up. you were in high school or in yeah i did dual enrollment school. and so okay. my dad is a professor um, so I guess that's where you got the idea from. Right. We were, me and my twin brother were like the first people at my high school to do um, dual. Do dual. Right I did that also when I was in high school. Yeah. There's something to that. <laughs> yeah. So I took um, Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, all that stuff. And okay. the seventh, the seventh class out of seven was 3D, and oh. that's how, that's when I was like my senior year of high school. So that's when I was like, oh, I should do this as a career. Right. So that's why I started my Black Woman Animator platform because I was like, I'm gonna introduce it to people earlier just in that's case dope. they don't they kind of off like me. Right. And where was this at? What city were you in? I'm originally from Detroit. I went to high school in Romulus, Michigan. Okay. That's what's up. Detroit, stand up. Um, what, Casual and Mac, East what, Side. What'd you say? Sorry. Casual and Mac, East Side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So what do you like most about your job as an animator? Um, I like that I went to college to get a degree in animation and I picked the right thing. I feel like I'm one of the rare people where you, you know, on Facebook, they'd be like, oh, if you go back to college, would you pick the same major? Right. Yes. Read me up, please. I'm so. like 1% of the people who would pick the same major. So when I was like working in Korea and sitting at the desk, that was my, my first job in the industry. Um, it was, it was great to be like sitting there and say like, oh my gosh, like I picked the right thing. I love this. I mean, okay, how did you get to Korea? Like, how was, what was it like working in Korea? How did you get to Korea? I mean, that's a long way from Detroit and, and Michigan. So what had happened was, <laughs> I graduated from college in 2008, which okay. was an awesome time to become an adult. Okay. Um, during a recession. And mm. so um, I was working for Digital Opportunity Trust in New Orleans. I moved to New Orleans after I graduated from college in Rochester, New York. Okay. And so I was working a paid internship, and I was like, um yeah, I'm trying to get a job in animation, but it's not working out. And so I saw one of my college classmates, um, Carmen Council. 
she was like posting pictures, um, bungee jumping and oh. wa- rafting. I'm like, Living her best and life. it's crazy because we didn't even talk like that in, uh-huh. I, in college. So I was like, I reached out to her like, what you doing? <laughs> she's like, I'm teaching English in Korea. And I had never heard of it before then. So I had decided in 2009, like, if I don't get a job in animation by like March, I'm going to apply. And so in May, June, uh, I, I decided to start applying, which... To so apply to is, teach English in yeah, Korea. Yeah, which ignor- ignorance is bliss, because if you're trying to go by August, you should start applying in March. So I didn't know. So I just was applying. Right, right. I ended up getting placed at first in Seoul, because that Seoul was really the only city I knew. Okay. But um, I got hired, and then and then they hired too many people, so I got fired. <laughs> so, but I worked through a recruiting agency, so they were able to place me in Gwangju, which is like the fifth, sixth largest city. And mm-hmm. so um, I ended up teaching at an all-girls middle school and all-girls high school in 2009. So you're teaching English, though? Yeah. Because okay. back then, all you had to do was have a degree in anything and be from America, Canada, England, Australia, and okay. maybe Ireland. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, okay, good to know. Okay, but how did that transition to being in 3D animation in Korea? So I what accidentally... I, yes, I accidentally <laughs> got a job at Amrisha Company. Um, so I was teaching English and it was very much fairy tale land like you just t- teach four classes a day I was about to do a second year and then one of, my, um, one of my friends was like don't you got a degree in animation I'm like oh yeah oh yeah I do <laughs> <laughs> and so you know the further you get from your degree the harder it is to get in so I was like maybe I should con- go back to trying to do that so right. in uh in Guangzhou I was just like okay I've never seen an animation studio so let me email a bunch of animation studios so I could get a tour. So that's actually what all I wanted. I was like, I just want to see an animation tool, yeah. uh, studio. So two responded. There was an incubator in Guangzhou that responded. The uh, woman took me around and, you know, showed me all the different small oh. kind of uh, animation studios that were working there. And she's like, yeah, if you don't know Korean, you can't work there. Here. Right. I'm like, <laughs> I didn't say I wanted to, but okay. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. Right. And then I went up to Seoul to digital animation. And they took me around, and I remember they were like, okay, let's uh, go introduce you to Carl. And I'm like, okay, who's Carl? <laughs> and we went to the 2D animation room. There was like cubicles on the, on the side and a long p- pathway. And we go to the end of the room and turn right, and there's a black man. And I'm like, what? What? I ain't not Carl? a black man. Carl's up in Seoul. Okay. All right, All right Carl. All right, Carl. <laughs> Shout <laughs> out to Carl in Seoul, Carl Korea. Carl Linton. And so he's the, um, the direct, supervising director for uh, the Cleveland show. Oh, the overseas wow. director and so they have sometimes americans work over there mm-hmm. um and then they the vice president and president took me back to their office and was like um do you have a demo reel which is a, just a portfolio a video portfolio and i was like no but i can <laughs> but so i can the, get that right to you yeah the next four months mm. you know in between teaching classes after school and, and on the weekend i worked on my demo reel wow and almost four months to the day i sent it to them and they invited me back up and i'm like all right they invited me back up to give me a job because <laughs> why am i going to be on a bus to Seoul? but yeah they offered me a job i remember sitting there like when they offered to me, I'm like, because when you teach English, they give you a, an apartment. So I'm like, I'm going to have to find my own apartment in right. this foreign country. Mm-hmm. But I was like, okay, maybe you know, God wouldn't give me anything that I wouldn't be able to handle. So Facts. let me just say yes, even though I'm unsure. Facts. And so I, it all figured out. Like, um, the vice president was very helpful to me. I, uh, uh, about a year or two ago, I sent her a thank you email. And I had wanted to do that for 10 years. And I was wow. always worried that I would be too late. But right. I, finally, I, I finally sent her an email, uh, like, an email, like... <laughs> Thank you for all you did for me. Like, she fought hard for me when I was in the immigration office. Aww. So, I was really appreciative. That's a beautiful story. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, how was it, though, working in Seoul? Did you did you face discrimination? Was it just crazy with a language barrier? Like, Yeah, then... so, a lot of people don't, oh, don't know. Like, I'm not fluent in Korean, <laughs> so right. I worked, um, and, you know, that's easier teaching English. Um and but like working for the animation company you know art is a language so i just i know a little bit of korean so uh-huh. i could you know make it bigger make it smaller like hand hand gesture we communicate right, right. in hand gesture oh, wow. and like when we go to lunch and stuff or, or i actually work 12 hour days so i ate breakfast lunch and dinner at work mm-hmm. glad i did that in my 20s because <laughs> i couldn't do that now right but, um like uh I would speak broken Korean. Mm-hmm. We would both speak broken English. English. Um, right. But Korea is very much one blood. Like, you're not get, be, getting discriminated against because you're black. You're just getting discriminated against because you're, you're not, not Korean. Korean. <laughs> so when I taught English, um, I remember my my maternal grandmother passed away. And my, my, my father actually called me 
um, the morning, like I was like about to head out the door to school and he called me to tell me my uh, grandmother passed. And I like if I had, you know, if he had called me the night before, I could have like slept on it, but like, oh, don't go to school. But right. I just didn't know. So I was just like, OK, let me go to school now. Mm. And I told my co-teacher and she like left it up to the, my o- other co- co-teachers to um, determine whether I could teach. And so the first three classes, they were like, OK, you can sit. Mm-hmm. But the fourth lady was like, oh, I think you can teach. Mm-hmm. And so I went into the class and like I broke down crying in front of the class. Right. Because and, and it just so happened like she didn't come in the class and initially. So I was like trying to tell them to be quiet, but I couldn't because I was so I was crying because I, my grandmother just passed. And right. I'm, I'm, I'm in Korea. Yeah. And so uh, that's when they finally sent me home at the end of the day. And I was like, if my, because I taught at the middle school and high school, so this was at the middle school. I was like, if the high school do the same thing, I'm I'm be a midnight runner. That's when, <laughs> when you just leave and yeah, you don't yeah. tell nobody. But my high, my high school gave me those two days off. So if it wasn't for my high school, I wouldn't even been in the animation company because I would have been left, you know, career and stuff like that. So cook. And the previous semester, one of my co-teachers, his grandmother passed, and they gave him three days off. So I knew it was because I was not Korean. Like, I guess I don't have emotions or something. Dang. So they, like, luckily, but luckily my high school gave me the days off. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Yeah, I, I can't imagine like going somewhere and working. First of all, you're just like at a new space, at a new place yeah. in this like field that's been your dream for so long, mm-hmm. and then like everybody's a like, different culture. Yeah, it was you know? it was um, crazy. Yeah. I, but cool. I, though. I feel like there's similarities between black people people and Koreans. Yeah. Like um, I don't know if I remember all the comparisons because that was like over ten years ago, but. Um, uh, like the fried I, chicken. I, I feel like I. Oh my god! Yes, <laughs> their fried chicken be quiet. crack chicken, crack chicken. Right, but let's say the black black, the black war veterans. veterans taught them how to make fried and they just chicken. took it to a man. Whole, they took it to another level. level. It's so delicious. So, let's, yes. let's not get it twisted. <laughs> let's let's talk about some of the the other jobs that you saw. Like you draw, but not everybody draws. But you can still be in animation because there's all these other jobs. Yeah. What are some of the other jobs that that you saw? You know, while you were in Korea, and, and was everything in Korean? Like, was the do they speak in Korean or they have different languages and things? Um, yeah, pretty much everything is in Korean. Like, um, uh, so I mean, like the, the shows, because oh no, because I worked on shows. American shows. Because right. you know, um, like I theoretically knew, you know, everything, all the creative stuff is done in LA, and uh-huh. they, you know, export it to you know, Korea, Japan, uh-huh. Singapore. Oh, okay, Australia, so like outsource India. the actual yeah. animation mm-hmm. part. Okay. Yeah, so that's why the importance of the overseas directors like Carl and then Doug was ah. the. Um, Cool. Overseas director for Family Guy and stuff like that. So, that's um, cool. yeah, uh, and then they have a, a huge translation department to translate everything. So, okay, so translation is job. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's um, and I just also want to say because I've done a couple videos on this, like it ain't easy. Like this ain't like a a path. Like I accidentally did this, and some people are like, oh, I want to do it too, and it's like it's not like getting a job in America because in 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 foreign countries you gotta have experience uh-huh. and I kind of fudged my experience. <laughs> hey, um, make it till you make it. <laughs> and so I was just really blessed to get that opportunity but it's um, it's not like a normal thing that you can just go do. Mm-hmm. But uh, some other um, positions, you know, there's obviously 2D animation. 2D animating is not my ministry. Um, okay. That's why I do 3D. Uh, I'm not, and you know, I go by Black Woman Animator. I am not an animator. I'm a 3D modeler. I just go by Black Woman Animator because it's Don't easier. nobody know what a mo- model no, is. No, 3D modeler um, is. So there's 3D, mo- like th- in 3D, there's 3D modeling, um, which is like making everything in the room. Everything starts empty, so you got to make everything in the room. And there's uh, texture artists where you, I call it everything, you make it look pretty. So mm-hmm. you make it look like wood, you make it look like glass, mm-hmm. you make it look mm-hmm. yellow, blue, all that stuff. You give it shadows and depth. Yeah. Texture, um, okay. And then there's like anim- uh, Rigger, who puts all like the little bones in the character for the animator to be able to move it. There's lighting, there's um, rendering, all the compositing, all that stuff. And those and, are all separate people? Yes. Wow. Because uh, it's very specialty driven. Mm-hmm. Um, and then people who are, uh, maybe can't draw production, uh, you can be a production assistant, production manager, um, producer, um, director eventually if you um, go up in, in, in the ranks. Um, so there's like... You could be, I mean, Disney needs lawyers, so if you love animation and still want to study law, yeah, right. you could be a I'm programmer, because um, there's a lot of tools, uh, proprietary tools that like Pixar and places use, so yeah. Okay, wow, that is amazing. So I'm excited to talk more with you about mm-hmm. this. So more with Deborah Anderson, 
the black woman animator, B-L-K-W-M-N animator, when we come forward on the unapologetically progressive KBLA Talk 1580.